This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm your host, Liz Palaika, and with me today, as always, are my good friends, Peter Burke. Hello. And Kate Abbott. How do? And as we record this, we're still in COVID. <laughs> still in lockdown. Still in lockdown, or back into lockdown, continuing lockdown, depending on where you live. And we've talked about, in a previous podcast a few months ago, we talked about some things that you and your dog can do to keep you both from going stir crazy. And in that podcast, we talked about some obedience training. We talked about brain games, both making games at home and some of the commercial brain games, which is still a great idea. But we thought we'd bring up some other ideas because we've been doing that with our dogs. And I know Petra and I both have young dogs coming up on a year and a half. And you cannot just let a young dog hang around the house not doing any, not do anything, or you're going to have some problem behaviors. So I know I've been quite inventive and what doing some normal things and expanding them or adding new things. Okay, well, because of our current restrictions, we cannot meet inside our training center. We're meeting outside. Where you can be socially distanced. And um, outdoors. We didn't want to do it on the asphalt, so we brought in a, a lot, a lot of mulch. <laughs> a dump truck. A dump truck full of mulch. And uh, spread it all around. Well, then, the other day, it occurred to me that I had some raised cot beds. Some. And then I started pulling them out some. from the garage and the shed and under the house and the storage. And it kept coming. And I, I realized and- <laughs> that I had enough. For each dog in class. And I had two, and when she came by my house, I gave her the two that I had. (laughs) So there is more than enough for each dog that comes to class and and a little left over, too. So I started distributing them at the as people would come in with their dogs. Okay, here's the bit. And every now and then someone would say, oh, they don't mind being on the mulch. And at that time I stopped and I went, why do I want them to do this anyway? And I said, they need to do it anyway because it's novel. It's Mm -hmm. something different. It's something different, but it also teaches them the concept of go to your bed or yeah. go to a spot. Yeah. It gives them like a spot. I mean, and, it can be and used. Here. And to control yourself there. I was surprised. Uh-huh. I mean, at least half the dogs went, cool, climbed right up, oh, plopped yeah. out. Yeah. But there were those dogs that went, oh, no, that's scary. Yeah. Oh, no, no, that, I, I can't be up on that. Yeah. So just spending the time to get them used to that was worthwhile. Mm-hmm. So I have been thinking about other novel things we can do to torture our students' dogs. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so, last, so last night's class was pretty darn funny. Yeah. So we had a CGC class that started. And, um, canine explain good citizen. Canine, yeah. I'm sorry, canine good citizen. So we didn't have the cops out. We've been having them out for class and telling the people, come grab one. Well, we did it for this class. So I offered it to him, and a couple of them wanted it. The little cute little white fuzzy wanted to get the dog off the mulch. And then uh, everyone's like, oh, no, we're fine, we're fine. And Kate starts coming. And, I, and then I'm like, okay, you have no choice. Yeah, you you're going to have no you're choice because gonna... you are going to get a bed whether your dog likes it or not. <laughs> uh-huh. You're going to get a bed. Yep, yep. <laughs> so everyone started laughing. Everybody got yeah. a bed. They did. <laughs> and there were a few that had to work through with their dog getting up on it. Yeah. So, okay, and then there's, sorry, sorry right, to interrupt right, you. Right. Then there's the concept of teaching your dog to use one of those. Yeah. So, wait a minute. I'm in the process of painting my living room. So furniture is pushed all over everywhere. I'm doing one end of it first, and so the furniture is, I mean, to walk through my living room, I have to zigzag. It's a mess. The dogs don't care. Right, right. Well, seven's in heat. So I have a dog crate out there, and when I can't supervise, she's in the dog crate. Well, when I was moving furniture, I took the various dog beds that were in, in the living room and threw them in the crate. So it's like Princess Centipede. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, she loves that. No. <laughs> she goes into the crate all the way back, and I think there's four dog beds piled on top of each other. Her head has to touch the top of the crate if she tries to sit up. But she's curled up there, happy, 
So, so I'm glad you told that story because someone has been making fun of me, adding blankets to my terrier's crate. I'm like, so that he could have a nest in there on these I'm cold like, hey, nights. There's no room for your dog. Yes, yes. That's nowhere even near the amount of, that Quill requires to keep his body warm. We had one of our students kind of, you know, said, well, you know, at night we do put a little bed in there. We kind of spoil. And they had a little terrier. And I said, oh, no. Oh, no. You don't spoil your dog with beds in the crate. Kate, come over here and tell them how many beds are in the crate for Jack Russell. And then you have to say mm -hmm. one last blanket to put over the top. Yes. So there's no drafts. So what are there, like four beds in there? Five, maybe? I don't know. I think there's only one bed, but I think there's four blankets and then one blanket over the top. Oh, my God. This for a dog that oh my gosh. was bred to work in a stable and burrow in the straw. <laughs> well, I, I have no straw for it. <laughs> it burrows in blankets. No. Okay, beds. for his birthday, I'm bringing you straw. <laughs> <laughs> a crate full of straw. Yeah. So these raised beds, though, are actually working great because it's also keeping a lot of dogs from roaming. Yes. They actually are quite more comfortable. They had to chill out. That's a great idea. It's It's yeah. been good in been really a lot good. of ways. So I wonder how many got them for Christmas. Since we started it before the holidays, people were like, <laughs> oh, we need to get one for my dog. They love That's it. true. Now, the, one of the funniest ones. That is may the be Greyhound. why there's harder for me to find them on the internet garage sales. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Because they, they, yeah. <laughs> so, there, so one uh, lady has a greyhound retired racer off the track. Lovely dog. Sweet dog. I love that dog. And, you know, we've they seen don't normally... very few bad ones from the right. track. Yeah. yeah but if he's, they come from the track, they're not. He's nice. extra sweet. <laughs> he, is. He, really is. he really is. So, you know, it was probably two or three of class when you started bringing out those cots. And so he got one. And all of a sudden, he couldn't help him sit, but he kept sitting. He was so happy. And okay, she wait, wait. The back story here is he was protesting sitting. I mean, he wasn't biting or anything, but he was just like, I can't, I can't, I can't sit. sit, I can't sit. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know, most racing greyhounds are taught not to sit. Mm -hmm. They got to be up on their feet ready to run. Like prodded. I mean, me mm -hmm. taught not to sit. Not so nice. asking this dog to but sit, he, he was horrified. Except, except, except when it got comfortable. He needed comfort to sit. And this little, this guy sat with his back legs like straight out from under. And he, just, and he looked like an old man. But he just sat. And he would just wiggle himself like all comfy. And then he well, go, they don't have any and padding. They, yeah, he reminded like, me of like a bear you see, you know. Oh, yeah. On their butt with the four legs up. Like, That's... Oh, my God. He was so happy. I mean, to, he was so adverse to sitting. We are like, okay, teach him a stand. And whenever we say sit your dog, you have him stand, stay, whatever. And he was doing great at it. But Gave he loved his cot. He was, yeah. Even the owner was like, he's never sat so many times. Every time he would come up, we'd do our thing, go back to his chairs, he'd sit down. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he was just so happy about it. It was great. He was. Now, to go along with that, if people are doing it at home, is teaching the concept of calm, C-A-L-M. Mm -hmm. Right. So every time the dog gets on the bed or on his rug or or whatever, he doesn't necessarily have to do a lie down and stay. Although we could say if you wanted him out of the kitchen when you were cooking, he could do a down stay. But if you can teach the the concept of this is your place to just relax, calm down. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stay. You don't have to freeze. But mm -hmm. lay down and be still. Stay within your boundary. Yeah. And I know I've done this every time I have a young dog at home. So so I did it with seven. Hero learned it. Bones learned it. Is, all right, I've got a dog book now. <laughs> I'm reading a James Harriet book or whatever. And I'm relaxed. And it's been a busy day. And I just want to be calm myself. Mm -hmm. Find a spot. Yep. And be calm. Settle down. And that's that's what I use is settle down. Settle. And if you've got a target spot like one of those cots mm -hmm. or dog bed or mm -hmm. rug, or my guys are allowed on the furniture, so uh, yeah. they can get up on the furniture. I, I do have a small confession. Oh God! Yes. Again, besides all the beds in your dog's crib, I have so many confessions. One of the new ones. And this that I is got... kind of scary to patronize, you know. 
Uh, one of the new cots I got is, is a small one, suitable for a terrier. But, but it also has a bolster that goes around three sides. Oh, yes. Geez. And it's a fluffy bolster. And if it's not fluffy enough, there's a zipper where you can add more fluff. <laughs> terrier yeah. stables. Work in the barn. Yeah. You're going to yep. ask me to put hay in the bolster, aren't you? But yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so I helped her put it together. The little bugger wasn't easy. And all of a sudden, okay, we put it together. And she pulls out this the bolster. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> she goes, look. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> See oh. how it looks on? It's just wonderful. <laughs> And by the way, those come in different sizes too. It's not just for the small and probably different colors too. Oh yes, absolutely. So uh, I was looking around at my junk. <laughs> things, you said it. Things that I acquire because someday it might be useful. And I pulled out a box of dog shoes, dog boots, dog slippers, even dog flip flops. What is it? Flip flops. Let's go between his Yes, you did the little pink ones. Oh, were those flip flops? Yeah. Oh little sandals. Little oh sandals. Oh my anyway. god. So I think I might have enough, it, depending on the size of the dog. Not put all four on a dog straight away, but maybe one or two feet per class per dog. And, you know, something new that to get might, them used to. Oh, that that would be fun for, class. for the intermediate for, and advanced. For graduation. But yeah. for, for the upper levels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we do flip flops. That way, but another fun thing. Okay. So now we have. Put, raised beds and shoes. Put, <laughs> put a shoe on classes, your dog. You tell never them. know what you get. You know, the funniest is to sit, wait, with two shoes on for the first time and then go across and then call them to come. Oh, that would be Because, you know, the, you the know way that be. first time they wear shoes, they're hysterical. You have to start looking for some goggles. Oh, God. Really? Now you put her on another mission. Those are <sighs> rarely show up on the garage sales. Oh. They're just too expensive. Yeah, they are expensive. The good ones, anyway. The only thing we could try is cheap swimming goggles. Because those can be adjusted in a lot of ways. To go (laughs) behind the head, under the chin, and spread on the muzzle. (laughs) Now, there was a lady at the Carlsbad Street Fair for years that sold those for that purpose. She had changed them to dog goggles. for girl dogs, panties. Oh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, we started that. We have three. <laughs> well, we've already we've done in the past. We've done a, a pile of T-shirts. Put yeah. a T-shirt on your puppy dog. Yeah, right? no mm-hmm. tutus and mm-hmm. feather boas. Feather boas. Yeah, novelty. Uh huh. But now we can use items for a and purpose. Mm-hmm. Teach them to wear booty. I don't know how many goggles. times I have defended that online, especially Facebook. Somebody's complaining because their dog had surgery. And wouldn't leave his bandages alone. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, every puppy needs to learn that he can have something on his feet, something wrapped around his body, because at some point in his go. life, he's going to need to be bandaged or protected in some way or move from Southern California to a cold climate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So back to our original topic, though, this is the kind of novelty you can do at home. And you can do it now when you're at home. You can can order this stuff and bring it in and torture your dog at home. You don't have to go out to torture. Or dig through your rag bag and there's an old t-shirt in there. There you go. Make sure it doesn't have anything bad on it. Wash it and play with it with your dog. There was somebody, you know, like putting clothes on them. Like I've got those, um, wrap the, you wrap them fireworks. No. Oh, Oh, thunder thunder shirts. Thanks. Yeah. I have one for each of my dogs, and they're all used to wearing them, and no problem. They love it. They don't care. Well, I had this one person <laughs> try to get one for her dog. Her dog just absolutely hated it, so she just took it off and returned it. And uh, I was no, like, no. No, no, no. It's not just for that purpose, but, so I tried to explain to her. She's like, well, she just really didn't like it. I go, but that's where teaching, training comes in. That's why we, we show them how to teach their dogs to get ready to wear a muzzle. You don't just slap the muzzle on the dog. Yeah. At Halloween, I posted one of the pictures of my dogs in costume. And because uh, some of the costumes I've done for my guys have been pretty elaborate. Mm-hmm. Cisco's mm-hmm. red kinky boots costume, mm-hmm. very yeah. elaborate. And someone was giving me a hard time about it. Oh, that's so mean. I would never do that to my dog and blah, blah, blah. And I went, how about if your dog needed abdominal surgery? Could you bandage him and have him leave it alone? Or would you have yeah. to put a cone on his head? 
that I don't have to put a cone on my dog's head. They're used to wearing things. Cisco oh, himself yeah. had a foot injury yes. that we had to wrap. And yes. he, he was good about it because he'd had stuff put on him. Yeah. And he loved, he loved, he he actually actually loved, loved being dressed. He loved being dressed. Cisco was the equivalent of a drag queen. Well, <laughs> the fancier he, yes. it was, the it. better. We called him yep. Cisco Dobby. Yes. Yeah. You know, yes. Dobby, Dobby, has Dobby has clothes. He was thrilled yeah. with the whole idea. Yeah. But even if they're not, it's a good skill for them to do. Yeah. And just in the being yeah. handled and just the feeling different. But make it yeah. fun. Oh, yeah. Cookies, cheering. The reason Cisco loved it was everybody cheered and went, oh, my gosh, he, look at you. You look so, so handsome. Cute. You're so cute. <laughs> Strut around. Oh, remember the Western one we did? Keely was an Indian, Indian princess. She, oh, she just loved that Indian princess. Rhea was the one. cowboy. Yep. Yep. Cisco was the Indian scout. Yep. And yes. we had a sheriff. sheriff. This is Jerry. Bashir. Oh, no. In... Was Indy the sheriff? No, that was before Indy. There was another German shepherd. I don't um, remember now. I have um, to look up that. I think I have a picture of the three, our three dogs. Yeah, but there was more. There was also a uh, sheriff. One of our students was I'll a do sheriff. A back and look. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we put them on backdrops, and and we were you were creating an entire story. Oh yeah. That we were oh, getting yeah. ready to put together. We we just kind of fell off of that, but it yeah. got very complicated. But we had the dogs sitting in front of a poker table uh, and chips yeah. and playing All cards kinds of stuff. And, at a brothel setup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bottle oh my of whiskey God. and all sorts of fun stuff. And, yeah. and the yeah. dogs were like, well, okay, that's what we're doing today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was great. It was fun for us, and we made sure it was fun for the puppy dogs. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's take a break for one of our sponsors. Take a listen. We'll be right back. Sit. Stay. It's a doggy dog world. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Help your dog from the inside out with Caniotic Daily Probiotic for Dogs. Caniotic's superior and exclusive technology makes it the only dog probiotic from the dog for the dog. Your dog's gastrointestinal tract is important to their well-being, and a daily dose of Caniotic is one easy way you can support it. Caniotic, C-A-N-I-O-T-I-C, is available on Chewy.com. Add it to your cart today and give it a try. We have a sponsor this month that we would like to thank, and I want to thank them personally because they're doing something very near and dear to my heart and my childhood memories. <laughs> For generations, James Harriet's memoirs, all creatures great and small and all things bright and beautiful have enchanted animal lovers. Now, in a set of brand new audiobook recordings, Nicholas Ralph, star of the upcoming PBS Masterpiece series, brings to life the unforgettable world of James Harriet and his menagerie of heartwarming, funny, and tragic animal patients. Full of charm and wit, the audiobooks are a perfect way to delve into the magical stories of the world's most beloved vet. The All Creatures Great and Small and All Things Bright and Beautiful audiobooks are now available wherever audiobooks are sold. And don't take them all, because I have to get some myself. <laughs> okay, thank you. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. We know you're begging for more. So back to It's a Doggy Dog World with your fetching hosts, Liz Palaika and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back. One other thing that I've been doing is... When I start to get a little cabin crazy myself, and I've been doing a lot of writing, so a lot of sitting at the computer, when my brain is ready to fry, throw the dogs in the car and we just go for a ride. Oh, yeah. We've made a lot of trips down to the harbor, and if there's not many people at the harbor, we'll go for a walk. If there's a lot of people, we stay in the car. But we'll just go for a ride. The ride itself yeah. is a break. Right, exactly. Yeah. Whether we get out of the car or not. Basically, whether we get out of the car, I judge by... How many people are around us and whether people are masked or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, just get out of the house and do something. And they like going for a ride. So as long as I don't go near Petra's house, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> it's because they lose their mind in excitement. <laughs> and we, you've heard us say before, we do not like dog parks, most of them. Right. Yeah. But A lot of them are closed now. Are they? Yeah. 
Uh, and having not going there, but I've been telling people that to expose their dogs to other dogs in a safe way during COVID, go to the parking lot of the dog park, but never get out of the car. Just go, hey, look at that dog and give your dog some treats. Well, so see, they get to see other dogs. It's not the same. Yeah. But it's better than nothing. Seven other. is, they're a year and a half year now, and right? Half, yeah. And herding dogs, especially bitches about this age, tend to start developing some protective instincts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <gasps> Stranger. <gasps> and it's not because of COVID or anything else. It's terrible twos. It's it's <laughs> approaching it's the, the terrible twos, and it's pretty typical. Yeah, normal. And it's typical for most herding and working breeds because that's what they were bred to do. So we have done that at the harbor. Lots of people walk their dogs at the harbor. So yeah. if it's too crowded for me to feel comfortable to get out and walk them, we sit in the car, I'll drink my iced tea, I'll have the window down in the back so they can sniff and smell the sea lions and hear the boats. And and then if somebody walks by and the dogs make noise, the boys, I can just tell them, that's enough, we're good, thank you. And if Seven starts to go, <laughs> I knock it off. And it's like, oh, thank uh-huh. you. <laughs> Teaching opportunities. Teaching mm-hmm. opportunity. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this would be a good time to work on the dogs that like to charge the TV when there's an animal on TV. Oh, there was one of those on Facebook, and everybody was laughing over it. And I was going, you're laughing now, but that's a big dog. And when he knocks the TV... Was that, oh, was the, that the Wheaton with the horse race? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> when he knocks that TV down... Yeah. It's not so funny. It's not so funny. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh-huh. everybody was just laughing over that dog, and I'm going, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> the first time, but don't encourage it, don't praise it. And they were, they, they thought it was hysterical. And it's like, yeah, look at the repercussions of that. <laughs> That's a big screen TV, and yes, the price has come down, but. <laughs> and the TV could come down on top of the dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Oh, yeah, it would not be pretty. The other thing that we. <laughs> we've been doing is I've been doing uh, more trick training. I love trick training. And Seven's adolescence slowed her down a little bit. Uh, (laughs) You want me to do what? Why? What's my motivation? Uh, (laughs) What does my character do in the scene? (laughs) Yes. But if she threw that attitude, then the boys did their tricks and they got treats and she didn't. And there were a few times she sat back and went, I don't care. I don't need a treat. And then as soon as we were done, she went and sniffed their muzzles. <laughs> what did she give you? <laughs> but you know what? You don't cooperate, you don't get a treat. There you go. You yeah. know? That's a learning opportunity in itself. But we've been doing some tricks as well as our obedience training and keep that brain busy. Scent work. Oh, lots of, we've been doing lots of boxes. That's a great you thing know, to do inside. Mm-hmm. COVID, Amazon delivery, yeah, right? boxes. Unlimited supply. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yep, I got some boxes in the garage. <laughs> yeah, I guess to a point when Amazon box comes to my house, it's like, let me open it first to get my stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or they're like, wait, is it in there? I'm like, no, it's my stuff that's in there. What was it the day that I was leaving your place after letting the dogs run and you got a Chewy.com box? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. Lord. Uh-huh. That was Christmas. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> You Every time it. it comes. Yep. They're usually heavy, but the dogs are out there. Like, Can I give it? Can I take this? One of the other things I think that's important, and I've been making sure to do with Seven, is don't let your dog be glued to you 24-7. Oh, yeah. Because. Yeah, we're hearing, hearing more and more of the separation anxiety. Yeah. When this quits, mm-hmm. when we're allowed I don't know that life will ever go back to the way it was completely. I think a lot of people are going to be more cautious afterwards but when we get back to a more normal life your dog needs to be able to be left already even people that are still working at home are going okay i can't get a moment away from my dog right and they're already looking forward to okay what happens when i need to go right yeah right yeah yeah and that's what I do. I mean, they're, they're with me in the mornings because it's cold. <laughs> Us wimps in California. <laughs> you it's, know, it's 45. Hey, it's cold. It's cold. It's, <laughs> this morning was 41. It was cold. <laughs> when I let him out this morning, that was, yeah. So I have them all in the room with me for a few hours in the morning. But then in the afternoon, it's like, nope, you guys go outside. 
I'm going to be in here and they just need to be, yeah. Well, and I continue the crate training. Seven doesn't, other than now when she's in season, she doesn't need to be crate trained, but doesn't need to be crated because she's not destructive. She's not getting into trouble, but it's a good skill. Yeah. And going outside and staying outside without me Mm -hmm. or amazing. Everybody lay down, stay. I can go to the bathroom by myself. <laughs> no, you can't. I, I know, it's a foreign concept, but but let's work on some obedience training. Everybody in the bedroom, lay down. Thank you. Stay. Go to the bathroom, come back out. Good, awesome. They don't like it. Mm-hmm. Apparently, I need to be shown where the toilet is. Well, there's always that back door exit, you know. <laughs> It's like, yes, you guys can do it downstairs for a little bit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, think of the new things you can teach your puppy dog. Novel, torture. Okay, while going through my Her treasures. Junk? My <laughs> treasures. Junk. Junk. <laughs> I found five or six yoga mats. Of course. Of course. So if because you've got... who doesn't need four or five? Yeah, I have one. <laughs> They're for trick class. Oh, okay. Okay, so you roll it okay. out. And then you put treats on it, and you roll it back up. Oh. And you teach your puppy dog to roll roll out the rug, or the mat in this case. Or just tear the center out of it. No. (laughs) No, no, you help them learn to nudge roll. So these yoga mats are going to show up the next trick class. Yes. (laughs) Uh, For tricks, too. The next level up. Oh, good. And? And what'd you find? What'd I find? I found those portable soccer goals. Next. Yes. And you got excited. I did, because I brought the ball. She brought a ball. Teach the puppy yep. dogs like in tri ball mm-hmm. to push it, nudge it mm-hmm. into the net. Mm-hmm. We did that with Bashir when we, uh-huh. we first got the big And did ball. you like it when they had showed it on the show, the pack? Yes. When they did it? They I was did like, it there. Yeah. That was so awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God, Bashir nudge, loved nudge, that. Nudge. I'd have to make him stop, though, because he'd rub it. He'd rub his nose sore. Yeah, he did all the time. <laughs> well, and he loved that huge one you got. He loved that, that big gigantic one. one. It was mm-hmm. as tall as him. It, when we say it was, it was a, one of those exercise balls. balls. Overinflated. Mm-hmm. Oh, a big one. It was designed for weightlifters to sit on while they lifted weights. Yes. They would have to use their core... Right. To help balance themselves while right. they lifted weight. <laughs> so it was a little bit heavier duty than the... It was quite heavy duty and quite yeah. big. Yeah. And even well, had a, a, a sleeve over it, a, a cover? Was no. Was that the other no, one? No, no, but it was... The horse one, the the horse one yeah. I know it, we have one. It the was horses. ridged. You could see <clears throat> where the guys using exercise, there were different patterns uh, to it. Okay. This is up, this is down, you know. But Bashir mm-hmm. loved Bashir, it. As an Aussie. But he would... Knock that thing like eight feet into the air. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But and he got pretty chasing. good at pushing it to a specific uh-huh. place. It took a lot of practice. And it was more him figuring it out. I couldn't tell him, do this to make it go here. Uh-huh. He had to figure out how. And, and I started with, bring it here. Well, he couldn't put his mouth on it to grab it to bring it to me. But it took a lot of practice on his part. How to move that gigantic ball to get it to go where he wanted it to go. Remember our, our <laughs> dogs pushing it past us and looking, ah, and then having to run and bring it back. I mean, they really had to work to figure it out. They had to think it out. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. great. Mm-hmm. I started it with Bones, too, but, oh, Bones kept popping them. Yeah. Yeah, he, Bones popped three or four of them, and then I quit. I can't push it where I go. I will get a canine tooth into it. Damn it. <laughs> Yeah, so it depends on the personality of your dog, too. Bashir was willing to learn how to control it. Bones was quite a bit more impatient. I will fix it this way now. I will bring the limp remains to you. (laughs) Yes. All right, well. One more. Okay. I've been seeing this on the internet. Stack up like empty water bottles Mm -hmm. in the hallway. Oh, and have the the dog walk through it? Some of them are making a maze. Yes. So the dog has to be very careful to walk through. Others are going, how many bottles are your dog willing to knock over? Yes. I've seen it with cats. Cats? Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. So I'll admit I did it with Kurt. Did you? <laughs> I didn't even have to train our new kitten. You just put, you know, we have a corner in the kitchen. We just kind of put the empty water bottles. And the other night here, 
thunk, clink, thunk. And I'm looking at her and she's literally like, taking oh, it's one. Oh, it be Bella, huh? Yes. <laughs> she's taking one, thunks it off. I mean, like, flings it off the counter, watches it, hits the ground. Oh, that's fun. Now, individually, <laughs> purposely. Mm. So if you put him in the hallway, she would just go flick, 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 oh, and she clear she it away. She loved this thing about flicking and just watching him go, boo! And then on the other side of it is um, Willow. You know, her, her and water bottles, you leave them around, she grabs them and to take, yeah. So I got yeah. a case of <laughs> water, so I did it with full water bottles. Oh, okay. For those listeners who haven't heard me talk about Kirk, Kirk is a foster fail. I got him as a three-week-old foster kitten. He's now five. He is the boss of all the dogs. Bones is afraid of him. Our hero ignores him. Seven and he are bestest friends, but Seven still respects him. Kirk is not afraid of anything in the world. So I took this case of water bottles and I took it out of the case. And most of the videos I've seen have been like in a hallway. So I made... Four or five rows of full water bottles across the hallway and then woke him up and he looked at the water bottles and he looked at me on the other side of the water bottles and he looked at the water bottles and I called him and I had some cat treats that I knew he liked and he went through about two rows, not knocking anything over, and then he sat and looked at me. (laughs) You're making me work. <laughs> and he just sat there. And I ran out of patience before he did. Uh... So the next time I set it up, I set treats up. Intermittent on to- rewards. On top of every third or fourth water bottle on top of the lid. And not to create a pattern, just to get him to go through it. And I saw him studying it. And then he went through and instead of going straight down the hall, he zigzagged through to go to treat, to treat, to treat, to treat, to treat. And I went, my cat's smarter than I am. <laughs> my cat is smarter than the dogs will cooperate with me. The cat's smarter than I am. <laughs> this may have just been a reaction to toilet paper and paper towel hoarding, but people making hurdles for their dogs to jump, uh, cats to jump over. Oh, yes, yes. So one row, two row. The, and oh. tell the cats. In go. the hallway. Yeah. Tell the cats, like, knock it I wasn't, I wasn't willing to risk the toilet paper. I admit, though, I did do the saran wrap one. What was that? You take saran wrap and you go across the hallway, like two or three heights mm-hmm. of widths of the saran wrap. Yeah. And I've seen it with cats. So I put all four of mine in my bedroom, put the saran wrap across the hall. You, it, you tape it. Tape it. Okay. Tape all right. It. And then I opened the door, stepped over the saran wrap, and I called them. <laughs> I did not fool any of them. Ah, good. <laughs> Didn't fool. Hero went through it. Bones and Seven hopped over it. And Kirk went. Oh, Hero made a hole. Okay, thank you very much. (laughs) (laughs) Like I said, they're smarter than I am. (laughs) But yeah, Hero went through it. But he did it consciously. It wasn't startled. He went up to it, looked at it, and then went, "Eh." That's not enough of a barrier for me. That's not enough of a barrier for me. (laughs) But nobody was was Freaked freaked out or puzzled by it. They all went, I see it. Were you trying to hide it from me? I see it. Because in some of the videos, they run into it and smash face like, you know, it's not there. Like, they don't see it. No, they saw it quite well. Thank you very much. It had nothing to do with you at the other end of the hall going, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there was a lot of me good. Well, that and the phone. Go ahead. Do something. I'll, yeah. I'll put it on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Warning, warning, warning. Crap ahead. Yeah. All right, for that, we'll let you go. And uh, look up the James Harriet TV show. It's on PBS Masterpiece Series. All right, so that's it. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Having a rough day? Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? 
Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award-winning author Liz Palaika. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> 